Hey everybody, so we've got another teardown to do today. This um, thing I picked up off eBay uh, a couple of months ago now. Uh, I've not really done a huge amount with it. Um, but uh, it uh, grabbed my attention on eBay because uh, it looked a bit weird. I hadn't a clue what it was. Um, so I thought that might prove, uh, prove interesting. So what this actually is, um, as you can see on the side here, it's called a Power Flash 500. It's manufactured by Pulse Photonics Limited, which is a a UK company which doesn't really have uh, much of a presence on the internet. There's not a huge amount of informa information I've managed to find out about this. But after some Googling around, I uh, it, uh, it was revealed that this is actually a, um, a short duration pulse light source. Um, so typically this uh, would produce a flash of light um, between about 250 and 750 nanoseconds. So this is used for um, Schlieren, I'm not sure whether I'm pronouncing that properly, or streak photography, um, or high speed photography. Um, so this allows you to have a, um, a very short duration flash, so you can capture uh, events in um, high speed. Um, obviously it doesn't do video because it's a single, a single flash, so it's still photography this, this would be used for. So if we have a quick look around the outside of this, it's a, a pretty big unit. It probably weighs about uh, probably about seven, eight kilos maybe. Um, it's a, a big metal box. We've got um, a big lens in the front here, which is mounted in a, uh, a machine plastic housing, which allows you to um, adjust the focus. There's nothing on the sides. And uh, on the bottom, you've just got uh, mounting holes. On the back here, you've got a few um, a few controls. We've got a, a focus light switch. Um, so this uh, turns on an internal halogen light, which projects out the front, uh, which allows you to uh, focus the, uh, the the lens mechanism. There's two um, gas ports here. Um, I'll go into those uh, a little bit more when we when we get inside it. We've got uh, mains input. We've got um, two trigger inputs, and we've got um, on and test and off and charge. Now these have lights in, so they, so these do indicate things to the uh, the end user. Right. So if we uh, take a look inside this, uh, we can go into a bit more detail about um, exactly how this uh, this works. So if we take a quick look at the box here, um, it's all uh, um, aluminium that's been uh, that's been welded in here. There's two rails that the um, the actual um, main guts of it sit on. Um, you've got a mounting mounting point there that's been welded on the inside, and then you've got the lens at the other end. So here we are. Here's the the actual unit. Now, when I had um, done a bit of research on uh, um, on Google for uh, exactly how this thing might have worked. I did actually expect to find a um, some kind of uh, flash tube in this um, because a lot of the similar products like this do actually use a, um, a specialized flash, a flash tube system but this one does not. Um, it is actually a, a spark, air spark gap. So you can see just here we've got a big spark gap um, and that's where the actual light source comes from. Now in this particular unit there is, there is actually two separate spark spark units um, this one here and this one here um, and they can be um, set off with a short duration between them which allows you to capture two frames um, of um, something happening in, in high speed. Now you can probably also see on here the um, the gas inputs that I described uh, earlier, they actually come over here and um, connect through to the top of the spark gap, which actually has a hole all the way through it. So this allows you to pump um, particular gases over the actual spark gap area um, to produce different types of spark depending on what you're trying to uh, trying to actually photograph. 
Now this looks to me like somebody has uh, rigged up two separate um, gas inputs um, because you can see here this was probably the original so you had one single pipe come in that would feed both both the spark gaps but I think somebody's added this one in at a later date presumably to run two different types of gas to uh, to each of the spark gaps. So if we have a closer look around some of the items in here uh, we've got the two uh, the two spark gaps that's this number one here and the second one is here then uh, at the back here we have a uh, high voltage power supply we've got a low voltage power supply um, this is a, a standard uh, switch mode um, power supply module which uh, outputs 24 volt um, down in here you've got the halogen focus light and the small little driver for that just there now the uh, between each of the, the the light the spark gap here and this one here there is actually a a, a sequence of uh, lenses as you can see in the back there to allow the focus light the um, second flash and the first flash all to come out the front okay so if we just flip this over we've got uh, the control board on the back on the bottom I should say so here we've got uh, the switches that are accessible on the back panel uh, we've got uh, a mains input filter here um, the two trigger inputs come in just here and connect into the circuit board just here um, that then passes through these which I believe are isolation transformers and as far as I understand it these are the two uh, trigger transformers um, to actually trigger the, the, the actual flash and you can probably also see here there's a uh, another power supply unit here um, this is uh, made by advanced high volt uh, model GM 24300P so I've not looked up this this part number but I would suspect it takes 24 volt DC inputs and gives you uh, uh, 300 volts output um, probably to drive these two uh, trigger transformers so you can see um, the output of this transformer here comes out here down underneath underneath here and then comes out um, just at the one of the electrodes of the uh, the actual spark gap so trying to uh, figure out some kind of theory of operation um, what we've got is two large uh, capacitor banks um, one for this spark unit one for this one these are charged by this um, high voltage power supply here as you can see the um, you got the input down down here which is just um, um, 24 volt DC uh, and one output which comes through here there's obviously a connection in here which then passes through and connects to the top plate here and then this second one does the same and connects connects just in here okay you can see here the um, the capacitors we have um, three here and another three over on the other side and that's duplicated for the second spark gap these are manufactured by High Volt Capacitors Limited, which is an, uh, an Irish company. Um, the model number is TPM 100-203. These are rated at um, 0.02 microfarads, um, 10%, and um, 10 kV working voltage. So as far as I can understand it, um, this this plate here this is um, ground um, you have the capacitors and then you have this um, this bus bar effect here uh, which is connected to the high voltage power supply so there will be a, a, a large uh, potential difference between these two plates which is why the spark gap is in the center of them so the uh, high voltage power supply will um, charge up these uh, these capacitors here and then um, the trigger mechanism will um, activate and then cause the, the discharge across the across the electrodes which generates the actual light source so the total capacitance we have uh, for each spark gap 
is uh, 0.12 microfarads at uh, 10,000 volts and the stored energy is uh, 6 joules per flash. So you've got uh, a total of 12 joules in this altogether. And uh, obviously uh, because we're dealing with um, high voltage here um, and capacitors then obviously you're going to need uh, some level of safety so there is actually some uh, fairly big bleed resistors in here um, which which bleed away the uh, the charge out of this when the when the power is disconnected and there is also a uh, a micro switch here which uh, um, once this the unit is taken out of the box this disables the whole the whole system so it doesn't even power on um, I've just got this taped over for the moment because I've been uh, I've been playing around with it so I guess the big question is, does it work? And unfortunately, no, it doesn't. Um, I have actually tried uh, powering this up, and it, uh, although it does power up, I'll show you that in a moment, um, it doesn't actually spark. So uh, there's going to be some uh, future video investigation into why it's not actually working. Ah. So uh, my first thoughts about why this didn't actually work was um, the high voltage power supplies are going to be under stress. I don't know how long, how many times this has been used. It could have been in operation for years. So I suspected the first thing to go would probably be the, the high voltage supply. Now at the time I didn't have um, any means to measure the high voltage. So I was just stuck completely. So I went off and bought myself um, a high voltage probe. So this is the probe that I bought. It's, um, it's a Test Tech HVP40. Um, and it will do up to 40 kilovolts DC or 28 kV um, AC. Okay, so I've just got this uh, plugged in um, and I'm going to power it up and show you um, what it actually does. Uh, so I've got mains power going in the back. Um, you just push the, the power switch. Now, the, um, as I said before, you have a, a focus light which is just a standard halogen halogen light, so that's, that's pretty simple. And here you've got the on and test button and off and charged. Now I, I expected this light to actually come on um, when the uh, capacitor bank was charged, but it doesn't seem to, so just pressing it just switches off and on. If I push this, that's that should be the test. but. Um, Obviously, nothing happens. So I've just got this set up here so you can actually see the uh, the spark gap. Um, at the back there, you can see the uh, red wire connecting to um, the bottom electrode um, and a small hole in the center of that electrode. Um, that is, um, it's just a, an open pipe. Uh, the bottom electrode has um, a gas supply through it as well. So um, that's mirrored on the, the top electrode. Now if I turn this on, obviously I have to be um, quite careful here because um, I've got at least mains voltage um, exposed, so uh, you do have to start being a bit more careful. So if I turn this on, so that's on and powered up. Now if I press the test button, you should be able to see there a small spark jumping between the um, centre of that electrode and the outer part. As you can also see, there's a, a white plastic insulator insulating the, the part that the trigger wire is connected to um, to separate it from the, the ground connection. So my next thoughts about um, why this isn't working um, then, um, as I said, jump to um, the high voltage because um, obviously there's a, some kind of trigger spark. I didn't really expect it to be in the position that it's in, um, but then um, it doesn't seem like this has been modified or damaged in any way, so I can only assume that this is uh, as it's meant to be. Um, so the next thing we need to check is the uh, high voltage. Okay, so I've got my uh, multimeter set up here with my uh, high voltage probe. Now uh, the meter, you set that to uh, DC or AC. In this case, it's going to be DC. Now the way these um, these probes work is they it's basically a, a voltage divider. So um, this is a thousand to one probe. So for every one thousand volts on here, you will get one volt 
on the actual meter. Now I've got um, I've got that connected into my my multimeter. These also have a a ground wire, which must be connected to ground because that's um, fundamental to how these things work. So um, you can't just connect these two into your uh, multimeter and um, and work with this safely. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just measure the voltage um, across these capacitors, which should be around 10,000 volts. So I'm just going to go and uh, turn it on at the back. Obviously, you now need to make sure that um, everything is well clear of all the exposed um, the exposed parts on this because uh, they could potentially be at 10,000 volts. So if I just uh, bring this here, yeah, as you can see there, we've got uh, 8.94 volts, which equates to 8,940 volts on there. So in conclusion, then. Uh, we have here a, uh, a nanosecond um, light source, uh, which would be quite fun to um, to actually rig up and actually use and see if we can get some high speed um, photography out of it. But before that, I need to figure out what's wrong with it. So, um, given that we have um, we seem to have um, capacitance, we have voltage, we have the trigger spark, which seems to be working. Um, I'm a bit of a loss as to uh, why this wouldn't actually work. So if anybody does have any any ideas on one, on things I can try or look at, um, I'll certainly be um, be interested in hearing about it. So if you could leave those in the comments, that'd be fantastic. So uh, I hope you found that interesting. Um, hopefully this will be the first part of a, a couple of videos to uh, to have a look at this and get it get it running. Um, I'll look forward to uh, reading any comments about how to uh, possibly get this working in the in the future. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.